scissor in here with another 3.5 betrayal guide and uh, this time we're going to be tackling winter orb we're also going to do blade vortex in this guide as well and we're going to update on the last guide with some new stuff um this is going to be a very very strong league starter and um they basically have the identical same tree so it's going to be a very very cheap build really good build and you'll be able to like pour current currency into this and make it very uh end game viable for map clearing um, it's not going to be an amazing boss killer. This isn't something I would do like Shaper or Elder with. However, any map boss, it should be able to instantly obliterate with um, Ball Blade Vortex, which we will also be using in Winter Orb to help with single target, but more on that later. Um, as I said, should be fairly cheap, but primarily just clearing maps fast. Very fun build to play. You'll have a lot of shatters, regardless if you use Winter Orb or if you use Blade Vortex. And... Uh, Let's go into it. So I'm going to be using a program called Path of Building. I use this for the majority of my guides. If you don't have it, I'll be linking it in the description down below. Definitely worth getting. Um, if you haven't followed any of my guides before, what I do is I do a step-by-step -step, um, in the point section here. You can see that I have like a, a tankier version and a more damaged version. So if you're playing softcore and you don't really care that much about things like face acrobatics, you can uh, take the spiritual aid nodes instead. I'll talk a little bit about them as well. And uh, this this all includes like the ascendancy choice. So like it's 60, you only have, or sorry, 60 points. There, you only have like your cruel lab. So you do do shaper of desolation first and then beacon of ruin. It's way better than growing pendulum and mastermind of discord. Um, this one gives you shock and stuff like that, and complex is really, really good damage. You notice it pretty quickly, and Beacon of Ruin will prolif, which means that like your your shock and your freeze will spread out to other monsters. Really big protection and damage, so definitely would do that first. Um, some of the support gems on the Herald and running your fourth Herald, you won't be able to do until um, you have Mastermind of Discord. And uh, you can throw in like enlightened gems and stuff like that. You need enlightened level two for it to do anything, but you can throw that in here. Um, and any any of the heralds, you can like put three heralds together and throw them in with an enlightened. But uh, herald of thunder, we have here as well. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit more about how we do the guides. So um, you do have those three options there, and then we also have different options for items. Here I have end game BV, early BV. Early Winter Orb and Endgame Winter Orb, and I'll look more over the items later. In the skills as well, I show off what to do at what level. Now, currently, Path of Building hasn't been updated. We do like have the stats for Winter Orb, however, we don't actually have it in Path of Building. This will hopefully be updated in the actual Path of Building by the time you're watching this video, but when I'm recording it, this is currently not in. So I've used a Blade Vortex here as a placeholder. Um, won't be able to see any like stats for this and um, or we would be using like lesser multiple projectiles control destruction hypo ice bite and cold penetration and the way I do the gems as well they're also listed by priority so for example if you only have five link drop cold penetration um, in game you could also think about I'll put this in actually too so we can think about instead of cold penetration using increased duration this would make that you would be channeling less like holding right click or whatever down less to make the orb above your head appear and uh, that's also part of why we have um, duration nodes but as you can see here these are like um, this would be your end game bv and then this would be like your end game um, winter orb and then if you're playing winter orb you would probably because we don't know how good the damage on this is going to be it does look fairly cool but again we don't know it's not fully out yet so like the background footage as well is um from videos we've seen shown by ggg and it looks nice it looks like a fun skill to play and we'll be using a four link vile blade vortex and um, so you would for example throw that on a boss mob and that'll help out and you have decoy totem as well so early on you'll only be using lesser multiple projectiles this is a 28 gems you would be using blade vortex until you can use winter orb the nice thing about this and i will be using this as my build for racing to level 100 and i normally never use new skills for this because 
Blade Vortex might be better, right? Or another skill might be better. But the nice thing here is that it's identical skill trees. Like it's AoE, projectile, I don't really, I don't really need to take any projectile nodes. Um, I can if I want to. Something I'll probably consider, this is more depending on how, um, how projectile speed affects it, but I might take Sniper for Winter Orb. But you'll see that fairly quickly, how like how affected it is by proc speed. So that's something we'll see when, when the skill actually comes out. And it's two points, so you know, very easy to do. Um, and the big update from the other um, from the other build is the uh, minion nodes. So this is all on the left side, so it's very little traveling. And the nice thing about this node, Spiritual Aid, is that it lets any minion damage affect, like, it becomes generic damage. And this also means you can use a Bone Helmet early on when you can't find, for example, a Devotus Devotion to go faster. Um, or you can use increased minion damage on jewels. You can get, um, if you use a Bound Fossil on a Scepter, you can get increased minion damage there too. So you have a lot of options for fairly easy minion damage that you can use early on to boost yourself. So it is quite a nice node. This is what I did for my the level 90 race competition that I finished third in. Um, and uh, the other option, which I normally do on hardcore, is acrobatics and face acrobatics. Definitely worth considering with incursion being core in the game again. Um, but but they're both both great options. So here we take like the the Marauder life. This is the last stuff. You could technically do Marauder last, but you know you have some options here for uh, skills, and they are laid out point for point. Um, in the items, if we look at early BV, I mean, generally, try to get a Herm Sorrow fairly early. Farm a Tabula and Act 9 Blood Aqueducts. It's fairly easy to do through the Humility cards. I usually recommend this for most builds. Uh, until then, just use the random 4 or 5 link chest. You can get a 6 link, that's great. I don't include resistances on any gear in the Path of Buildings because... I don't want to be specific with where you should get the resist. It doesn't matter if you get it on a belt or a ring. Just try to get 75% fire, cold, and lightning resist around Act 4. Remember that in Act 5, once you kill Katava, you do lose resist. Same with Act 10. Um, and then if we look at Endgame BW, we've got Impulsa. You want this for both the builds. Devotus Devotion as well. It's to shield charge faster and to like move faster. It's great. Also got loads of decks. You only need that if you're um, Blade Vortex. You don't need that for the Winter part. Doesn't seem to use much decks. Uh, Esh's Mirror. Loads of damage whenever you're killing things. Again, this is a clear speed build. So you're going to be hopefully having killed quite a lot of monsters. And whenever you see recently, that refers to the last four seconds. Um, Visco's Leash is quite nice. Gives you Rampage, which also gives you... That's the counter that's on the left that counts up as long as you've killed things and gives you various buffs and also damage and in this case rarity but serious promise as well really nice to get early on you could consider getting a dying sun on endgame bv for more aoe not really needed wouldn't recommend it um however for endgame winter orb uh, actually i haven't put this in yet but you know do it as the fire link's about to go live so here I would recommend a Dying Sun on Winter Orb because it gives you more projectiles and more AoE and these things do overlap. Something I might look into doing lesser LMP or LMP, TMP and Volley. Maybe the overlap will be crazy, you know, um, sometimes with stuff like this they are. Um, jewels, there's loads of things you can do. If you have the minion nodes you can get minion damage, then you have like area damage, damage, um, you have cast speed, spell damage, quite a few things as well. Um, so that's nice. On Winter Orb, Winds of Change is something that's like quite nice early as well. They're usually pretty cheap. A lot of people kind of forget they exist and uh, don't usually go for them. They also drop fairly often from, I think it's either Normal or Cruel Lab and above. And uh, they are fairly common. Flasks are very overlooked and very important to do. A lot of the time when I look at other people's builds, they've forgotten that Flasks are really important. Try to get an instant life flask around level 24, and then again a 42, and then again at 60. Um, I usually prefer of heat on my life flask. And then you want to make sure you have an immune to bleed and immune to freeze, very important. And then after that, you want to be curse immune by warding, and shock immune is quite nice as well. I see here that I have two warding flasks, but you get the point. 
Um, so we do have a lot of options for this build. Another thing as well we do in the build is in the notes we talk about where where to buy things. Um, so this is like a full list of where to buy the gems, what quests you need to do. Hopefully this helps a lot of the newer players. I know a lot of the build guides can be pretty confusing. I just realized that um, I have not mentioned anything about the bandits or pantheon in this build as well. We're going to start having things like that in the notes. And we're also working on making written guides for a lot of these with Mariki doing that. Um, so for bandits, taking a Lyra on day one isn't bad for this. It is, however, a non-crit build. Um, a Lyra is still nice on day one just to get the resists and the mana regen doesn't hurt. Um, I just realized something I actually forget mentioning on this build. Leech on boots lets you drop mana flask. Early on, you, you might want a mana flask to help sustain. However, um, once you get to Cruel Lab, you have the option of running that over and over again, hopefully on some decent boots that you might keep for a while, and getting the 0.4 mana and life leeched if you've killed recently. Very happy I remember this. Um, this is like something I am very happy about getting early in the level 90 race and is massive. Um, ball clarity as well can help on bosses. So um, you would like run in, throw down while BV, uh, regardless of which type you are, and then um, and then you would uh, use Val Clarity afterwards so you can keep casting. Generally enough to like finish off most bosses. Um, Pantheons, and it generally like you can respec your Alir later with 20 regrets and an on examine. You sell that in Act 2 and that gives you 2 skill points again. Uh, obviously you do lose the resist then. Pantheons, you want to do Solaris is quite nice. Um, also, you can do Rallykesh whenever you're ascending, but generally I prefer to have um, Shakari on, especially if you can upgrade it. I think it's a tier 15 or 13, 14. Very high map now, but um, you can upgrade that and then you're immune to poison. So that is definitely worth doing and very, very big. Let's you completely ignore um, enemies' poison on maps. I think that's the majority of things I want to cover for the build in trying to put out as much content as possible for you guys before Betrayal comes out. And uh, so with the with the Heralds, you might not be able to use all the support gems and stuff uh, until you have the Mastermind of Discord. Which is here, which is the uh, reduces the Herald Reservation. Again, you might need to stop in an Enlighten or two. Um, a lot of people also probably ask, like, Ziz, why don't you do a crit? And Impulsa is virtually the answer to that. And it has been nerfed down to 5% now, however, still very worth using. And the reason for that is that your Herald and Impulsa does not get scaled by crit. does, however, get scaled by Elemental Overload. Crit would be better if you were doing boss killing. This BV Elementalist, whether you're crit or non-crit, generally isn't why you would do, like, uber elder or what you would do stuff like that on um i think this is the last one we'll have time to make before betrayal goes live so hopefully this helps you guys <coughs> if i have missed something or you have any questions about the build please come by twitch.tv slash scissorin i will be streaming the majority of december and should be able to answer any of your questions and uh good luck in betrayal hopefully this helps and more importantly Try to die less than I do.